traders, welcome to your 7 minute market update utilizing technical analysis to predict direction based on human emotion. Today is June 27, 2012. Lots to talk about, so let's get started. All right, so this is a chart of the SPY, which is DTF to track the SP 500. Uh, so, what happened today was basically we went up a dollar, uh, a buck 19. And um, it looks like that there's a possibility that we could come um, into contact with this uh, 50 moving average as we talked about in the last video. We also have this pivot top here. So this should be pretty sig significant uh, resistance. Uh, the problem I have is let's just say we do uh, get into this level tomorrow. Um, that would be, let's see, today's close was at 133.17. Um, and the 50 moving average is at 134.39. So that's a little bit over a dollar. So if we get another move like we did today, then we'll definitely get into that 50 moving average and this pivot top here. Um, I do expect, uh, again, some resistance at this uh, level here. Um, there is a possibility, however, we will t uh, tag this uh, 135.44 calculated level. And the reason for this is simply simply this. If we can tag this 50 moving average tomorrow, which is, uh, uh, I believe, Thursday, uh, Friday will be a low volume day. Um, and, you know, to be honest, today was also a low volume day. I mean, in all honesty, today's volume was uh, 108 million uh, shares traded. I mean, that's just ridiculously low, uh, which is, you know, I'll get to the volume part later, but that's telling me pretty much that uh, no, nobody wants to trade in the market right now. They're all waiting, I guess, maybe for the summit tomorrow. Um, so big, there's going to be some big news tomorrow. So we may not even get up to this 50 moving uh, 50 moving average. Uh, we may pop right into it, get gap right into it. I mean, who knows? I mean, it's anybody's guess uh, as far as uh, what happens in the news tomorrow, okay? It could actually be a flat day tomorrow. Uh, in essence, though, what the charts are telling us is basically there is a possibility that we can get into this 50 moving average. We'll have a down move and up move right into this 50 moving average before we come right back down. Now, here's the part that uh, gets a little bit tricky. Uh, again, Friday. So if we don't go into this level on Thursday, Friday already is going to be low volume. It's almost as if we're already in vacation mode um, because next week is obviously 4th of July, the week of 4th of July, and I've ar I'm already ex expecting low volume around that week. And low volume, with low volume, you have to give it an upside bias because, you know, it's easy to prop the markets up when nobody's in the markets to trade. If nobody's out there to sell, if there's no panic or anything like that, the markets are going to get propped. That propped higher as proven today we went up a buck 19 on volume just little over a million shares per uh, million shares traded I mean our average is 150 million shares and uh, over just over 100 million that's really nothing so this move right here just like I said yesterday this move I cannot validate because the volume is just not there and then even more so today we went even higher and the volume is even lower so what does that tell you that well that tells me at least that these moves are more of a, a bull trap Okay, so people will probably um, go long in this, uh, in this, on this candle here, thinking that the market's going to go higher, and yes, that is a possibility. But again, I like to put the odds in my favor. Right now, it'd be a gamble if I went long. Now, not only would I be chasing, but already we are going to be in two resistance levels here. You know, I'd, I'd look to short the market. The trend is still down. There's nothing telling me right now that the trend has changed. Okay, so right now, what I'm going to say is this. Um, there is an upside bias. It gets tricky because there is an upside bias due to the low volume that we've been getting. It's almost like we're already into next week. Okay. Um, with that, if we continue to have low volume, then I continue to expect the markets to uh, have an upside bias like we've been seeing. Now, again, it's not 100% guarantee that you're going to get an upside bias on a low volume day, but more than likely, more than not, I would say 75-25% uh, chance that it will um, have an upside bias. Now, 25% is still a big percentage, but if I had to bet and again this would be a gamble but if I had to bet then I would bet the 75% chance right so if there's low volume I would have to guess that there's an upside bias I would never make a trade on that guess um, unless there's other factors in place Sim simply this if uh, I see a stock that's going down into a pretty good support and I know that next week is going to be a low volume and there's going to be an upside bias then I'll probably take that trade uh, even though we are in a uh, downtrend and that would be a counter trend trade I would still take that trade just based on those um, uh, on those technical uh, reasons why uh, I would think that the, uh, this particular stock will go up now if a stock is already up into already at resistance I wouldn't take a long trade just because um, you know I, I expect an upside bias right it wouldn't make sense to do that let me give you an example 
This is a daily chart of Walmart. This is the beast that I've been talking about in my previous videos. In fact, I'll talk about this. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it now. But right now, it's just, it's just doing this little consolidation pattern before possibly going higher. I mean, if the markets continue higher, I see Walmart getting into the seventy dollar and fifty six cent level. In fact, um, if it can get there, you know, sometime the end of next week, then I'll probably take a short trade on Walmart because after next week, I expect the markets uh, to probably continue down. But the point I'm trying to make here is I wouldn't go long Walmart just because I think it's going to go to the $70.56 level. No, that that's not what I think it's. I think it's going to get there, but that's not the plan. I mean, as a chess player, I mean, you know, you have to wait patiently for the best setups in my opinion, right? So right now, um, just because I think there's an upside bias next week, I wouldn't uh, go long Walmart simply because I think it's going to go to the $70.56 level. Why? Because I'm going to wait till it gets to the $70.56 level and if it does get into that level which would be a resistance level then I would take a short right now um it's this this chart is just in a bullish consolidation period right now uh there, yeah sure there is a chance that uh, you might get a pop higher but i really don't like the pattern i really don't like the uh you know if i had taken the move here uh at the 20 moving average then that would have been fine but the move has already been made if i continue to uh you know trade uh on the long side on walmart then i'm obviously chasing and that wouldn't be good in addition to chasing i mean it's not in a good enough support area for me uh to go long this stock uh because it may not even get to the 70 dollar and 56 cent level but if it does is when i take a short trade on walmart that's what i mean by um just because it's low volume you have to have an upside bias but i wouldn't uh, base a trade off of it okay so back to the SPY, like I said in the previous videos, we may come down and we may start consolidating and then uh, come down. So right now we're creating somewhat of like this bull, bull flag or this uh, upper uh, channel line here. And then uh, basically we, we may come down. Now if there's some really awesomely good news tomorrow that comes out of the summit or whatever the case may be, we may have some technical damage. We may actually break through this level here, uh, get up into this 135.44 level, and then ultimately uh, the target that I was expecting from uh, you know last week's videos which is 137.72 but again we have to take it day by day I'm a short-term trader I'm not looking for you know one month to be you know to be in a stock for a whole month or even a whole week I, you know just a day or two I'm out or intraday trades you know 10 minutes or 20 minutes I'm, I'm normally out of the market already in and out is is the way you want to play it uh, just to let you know I did get stopped out of the SPY for a uh, profit um, was that today? Yes, that was today. Today I got stopped out of the SPY. Um, I scooped a 30% profit. I had an in the money stop. Uh, that's the way you got to play it. So even if the SPY goes down tomorrow, no big deal. I already made my money. First half I made uh, 30%. Second half I made uh, 30%. Oh, actually first half I made a little bit more than 30%. And second half I made about 30%. So, you know, uh, that's just the way you play the game. Uh, you can get greedy after second half. I got greedy, but then I got stopped out. I still got stopped out for a profit. I could have put a break even stop on my second half but I decided to put it in the money stop just because I don't know what the market's going to do it looks like it wants to uh, head for this 50 moving average okay this is a chart of the UUP which is uh, US dollar uh, you know I really got to save these drawings but then we had the support line here went right into support into and, and to, and into this 50 moving average went right into this 20 moving average and then um, bounced off of it which uh, gave the markets a prop higher and then uh, later on uh, we actually uh, close above this 20 moving average all right so the markets caught a bid and the uh, the UUP actually caught somewhat of a bid up seven cents um, which is not bad now this is telling me that the UUP is in somewhat of some strength here you could consider this a consolidation over the 20 moving average which does show some strength it's above all these moving averages here um, so it is showing a lot of strength we may or I do expect um, if the dollar continues higher to uh, go into this level up here, which would be a double top, uh, we, we actually could get there tomorrow. I doubt it. The UUP doesn't move as fast as the DX, but, uh, you know, there is a possibility that we could potentially go higher. Now, the way to validate this, uh, and um, I'm sure you guys, the, the ones who normally watch my videos, anytime that uh, you... Uh, you know close above a moving average or a level or a calculated level or whatever or a pattern or whatnot um, after the fact I need to see a close on the next day above this candle to validate this move and um, you know substantial volume would be nice as well okay so if tomorrow 
uh, we close above this candle here in the dollar, then I would I would have to expect at least a move into this uh, pivot point here. If not, uh, this 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 pivot point here, which I think is probably going to be a lot more substantial. So anywhere in this area here before we get a pullback on the dollar, if we even do, and um, if we break through those two levels, then uh, we expect a double top on that. So uh, I do see more downside in the markets. I do not see a higher high yet on the dollar. So you know if I do see a higher high on the dollar, then that'll show me. Uh, that there's going to be a lot more strength in the dollar which means there's a lot more downside in the actual markets okay now this is a chart of the god which is the etf that tracks uh, gold so we had this down move and now what does this look like to you this looks like bullish uh, i'm sorry bearish consolidation to me um i really don't like playing consolidation patterns i don't have uh, very much luck playing with consolidation patterns however i do see a lot of people who uh who are very good at trading consolidation patterns. But for me, um, you know, out of the 100 uh, consolidation patterns that do work out, for whatever reason, I'll pick the one that doesn't, the very one that won't work out. So um, essentially what I'll do is this, unless the consolidation pattern is close to perfect, I probably uh, won't take the trade. So if gold somehow can get into this uh, 20 moving average and this 50 moving average while uh, they kind of kiss each other then I'll probably take a short on, on the GLD but if that doesn't happen even though these uh, two moving averages come close and uh, cross over each other I may not I, I may not take the trade but it does still look like a very nice uh, bearish consolidation pattern especially with these two moving averages coming in uh, coming into play coming close together uh, it's gonna give a lot of pressure to the GLD to make another move down uh, I would think that your first support line will be here it's going to be a very minor support and of course your major support will be at this calculated level here uh, which is um, 149.12 will be a retest of that all right so I'm um, going to keep an eye on gold maybe uh, you know I would think maybe uh, after the uh, 4th of July um, time um, I'll take a re, re look at the GOD and see uh, if the pattern looks uh, even ripe. I was hoping that it would get up to this 160, uh, 160, 96 level, um, but uh, you know I never got there, so I never took the short. You know, and that and, and that's just the way it is. I mean, you have this uh, upside movement here, and then you have this consolidation pattern within this uh, rising wedge here, and then um, you know you would expect another move up, but um, when the pattern failed, right? Uh, like I said in previous videos, when patterns fail, uh, normally the move is uh, quite large, which is what happened with the GOD. Actually, even broke through this uh, this rising wedge pattern here. So, you know, it, it's very hard to read, but uh, this is a nice uh, bearish consolidation pattern, in my opinion, uh, for gold. Okay. This is a daily chart of Apple. So Apple caught a bid today, unfortunately, because I'm short Apple. I believe it caught a bit today. It was up like two dollars and, and and change. Um, and as you can see, it didn't quite close. It kind of did. Well, what's what's the price here? It kind of it's very very close uh, to closing above these two moving averages here. And to be honest, um, unless it can close above uh, or back into this um this trend line here, uh, you know, it's it's still showing some weakness. So in all honesty, this does show uh, a little bit of a bearish pattern here, which is a, a bearish uh, consolidation pattern. And you know it'll probably go right into this one 58107 level uh, before heading back down. I did, and I and I still do think that there is a possibility that uh, Apple could get into the 60762 level. Uh, I took the trade earlier because it broke down from this uh, this pattern here, but there is still a possibility that 60762 level uh, is you know is still in play. Okay, so you know I got to keep my eye on that one, and if we uh, you know have low volume next week and uh, institutions uh, decide to buy Apple because Apple is still a stock in strength not as strong as Walmart but it's still a stock in strength and the 607.62 is where I would initiate another short after stopping out of my current uh, position for Apple okay all right this is a chart of EOG I talked about this in a previous video I said it went right into this 82.59 level um, I didn't want to chase it because uh, I missed this trade but uh, today it went up so you know it, that, that just shows you how uh, powerful that these levels can be okay again nothing's perfect and nothing's 100% except death but uh, you know pretty much uh, it looked good to me so you know I'm kind of bummed that I missed that trade now this was the COG chart that I talked about in the uh, previous video and as you can see I said okay if we can get into this 35 40 uh, 38 45 level it looks like a good um, shorting opportunity in my opinion however check this out boom it just blasted through on huge unbelievably huge volume there must have been some sort of news that came out on, on this or or whatnot it went straight into a double top before it pulled back you see how powerful these double tops are and then it pulled back intraday um, 
I'm thinking this this guy could go even higher. Now, you know, I'm I'm one to uh, you know admit that I, I was actually wrong in this move, uh, this 30, 45. But again, these mathematically calculated levels, there's a lot of technical damage in just one day. But these mathematically te these mathematical uh, calculated levels will only work in normal market conditions. And what I mean by that is it won't work during earnings. This is the kind of move you see during earnings, or when there's big news, which is what I assume. Uh, must have happened on COG. So it, COG just blasted through all of these uh, resistance levels here, which was quite a bit, and then um, went right into this double top. Do I think that uh, there could be more upside? Yeah, there's definitely a possibility that we could go all the way up here simply because there is a lot of volume based on this move that validates this uh, move actually here. So I expect a possibility that we get a pullback, um, you know, a small, you know, like either a flat day or, or kind of a hang day uh, before heading higher. That's definitely a possibility. COG is, uh, again, uh, this is this is exactly my point, what I mean by you don't want to short strong stocks. Okay, so this stock was a stock in strength. I explained that to you guys in the previous video, last night's video. And, uh, you know, shorting a, sh a strong stock in, in a weak market is, is not an easy thing to do. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's easy to short a stock that's in weakness right it only makes sense and this is a perfect example why because as soon as the markets catch a bid the actually the markets uh, must have helped this guy go even higher simply because um, the markets caught a bid the markets were positive today and then uh, you know you had a huge upside uh, momentum push right into this uh, double top here and then now you have another one that it could potentially hit up here you know what I, I would have to recalculate the levels here and um, you know probably go back even further to see if there's any other strong resistance points but I will say this the stock is definitely overextended um, I don't think it has that much more upside if somehow by the end of next week on Friday we can get into this level then I'll consider taking a short why didn't I take the short on this trade here um, that was easy um, uh, we gapped right under this level here um, and that tells me that the stock is in a, a lot of strength right there and then it just pushed right up during the intraday it was just unbelievable if you look at the intraday I never trade the market uh, when it first opens right so it opened right in the beginning here and it just blasted through right here and this this obviously told me that this stock had a, a way too much strength right now it, it just you know it was just like a rocket it went straight up into this double top here before it had a just a tiny pullback okay so uh, that's another reason why that you want to stay away from sh uh, shorting you know big stocks like Apple the COG the EOGs you know stuff like that um, you know, you look for the weaker stocks. I like to venture into bigger stocks with a smaller position uh, or stronger stocks with a smaller position just because I like the little risk sometimes. But, uh, you know, I, I need to make sure that everything is in my favor other than the fact that it's a strong stock. OK, so I'm way over my time now. So, uh, you know, thank you very much for watching. Uh, God bless to you all. And I hope to see you in the next video.